Hey there, Retro Record Kiddos. This is That Zoo of another quick play or let's look at or whatever I call these things. I forget by now. But I'm booting up the old Saturn this time. My class is, my first year semester of college classes ended recently, so, and I have four months of doing whatever until my next sem sem semester starts. So hopefully in that time I will get a job or something and I have more time to do videos. So hopefully I will get daily videos or nearly daily videos. I'm not promising anything, at least videos weekly, if anything. Between this channel and my personal channel, self-plug my personal channel, I put up videos over there too. You know, personal channel, same with self-promotion. <laughs> but yep, anyway, this is Sega Rally Championship with in-game advertising. <laughs> Yep, back when advertising standards were a bit more lax in video games. You could have real world brands and stuff. But yep, this is Sega Rally Championship, as the announcer will say. This is a classic Sega arcade racer from arcades, made in 1995. Sega Rally Championship. Thanks, announcer. Announcer. So yeah, like I said, it's a classic Sega Sega racing arcade racing game. You start off in the back of the pack, and you have to try to work your way up to the front without running out of time. Yep, it's classic checkpoint to checkpoint racing before time expires, and try to work your way up for, to the front from, from the rear. Classic racing formula. It always seems to be how it works. You never get a chance to qualify, it seems. Unless it's pole position. Uh, you never get a chance to qualify at all, it seems. Oh well. But yeah, as you can tell, you control rally cars. And they're a lot more floaty than Daytona cars, I will say. Uh, like I said, I was more of a Daytona guy. I wasn't really of a the Sega Rally guy, so I'm used to Daytona stock cars, so this is a bit different. But yeah, this is a Sega Saturn port of Sega Rally. It's a pretty faithful port, and it has extras in it, and I will show, try to show most of them. But yeah, I'm going off track everywhere. So before we start, I gotta mention something. Just, it's just bothering me. Rally Championship. Does this look like the DiGiorno Pizza logo? It looks like the DiGiorno Pizza logo. Tell me that doesn't look like it. Vaguely. Or some sort of pizza logo or something. I don't know, that's what it reminds me of. Anyway, yeah. Let me diddle with stuff before we start. You got the options. There you got handling, it determines how much lag there is between your input and what happens on screen. Slow is there a lot of lag, normal is normal, and quick is pretty much instantaneous. Well here's what I need to mess with, the difficulty in the laps. If you're playing on true arcade settings, you would do a hard one lap. That's how it is in the arcades. But let me tell you something, it's too hard for me. <laughs> That's too hard. On these settings, I can finish with maybe one or two seconds to spare, but I finish in third or fourth, maybe fifth, if I have enough time. Yeah, I suck at Sega Rally. Like I said, I was more of a Daytona USA guy, but I'll get into that when I do Daytona. And on three laps, I think there was an option for three laps in arcade boards, maybe. But yeah, on three laps, I time out on the second course. <laughs> so yeah, I really suck at Sega Rally. Normal one lap. I finish, but again, I don't finish first. I finish second or third, usually, with at least 10 seconds to spare. But the problem is, you don't get to see the full game unless you finish first at the end of the last race, so... This is where I need to be. Normal three laps. That gives me enough time to catch up to the cars. And it gives me enough time to... to... get the lead and stuff, like I said. Easy would just be too easy, nobody would have fun there. And time attack, I might show that later. And you got the sound test, you can set sounds, you can ch change the background music for each course if you want to. And each cra tr course also has their own replay music, I just leave it at the default. Checkpoint! Yeah, checkpoint. Four minutes, we got our time extended from four minutes, thirty seconds to thirty minutes. And you get to see, you get to set your controls, diddle with your controls if you want. It looks, the screen says I'm using the Sega Saturn racing wheel. It's lying. I'm using the Saturn 3D pad, if you can see it. That came up nights. For some reason, it displays it as using the sa the racing wheel, which makes moderate sense, I suppose. They both have analog steering, which... Trust me, analog steering is imperative for racing games. 
Trying to play racing games with a D-pad it sucks. Really. <laughs> and he and he got robust the controls here. Brake, accelerate, change view, and shift. That's pretty much all you need. You can sort of change the view slightly with four defaults. I hate games where they don't have custom controls, but oh well. It's a, it's a game from 95. For complaining about games from 95, well, you, got, well, you don't have a life anymore. But yeah. Also, I tried using the... I can't get... It, it kind of sucks that it doesn't have the accelerate and brake on the shoulder buttons, but oh well. And also, the shift, the shoulder buttons don't really work for me. I tried using a manual, and it won't shift. I don't know if that's just my incompetence at a manual or what, but eh. I, I usually use automatic anyway. And you can see at the bottom there what it would look like if you're using a regular controller on two player two. So yeah, it's a bit different. Eh. So type A. You can see the records for for your tracks, arcade, championship. You can see arcade mode and and times and stuff. And you can see any. You can also customize the cars too, to an extent. To an extent, you can use the skeleton of a Celica or a Delta. You can set manual or automatic transmission, slow the quick handling from one to five, soft the hard tires from one to five. Loose the tight front and rear suspension from 1 to 5, and 1 to 5 blow off valve, whatever that does. I kind of get what the handling and tires do, but the suspension and blow off valve, well, I haven't got the clue. But yeah, if you want to get the most out of your Sega Rally experience, I guess you can make a custom car, or use one of these by using a skeleton and save it to slots A, B, C, or D, assuming you have enough space in the Saturn to save something. <laughs> And you can use these cars in the two-player battle mode or the time trials. You can't use them in arcade mode, which I would break the game if you could, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. So yeah, two-player battle mode, I might show this a little later, but yeah, there are three modes of play. There's a three-lap race, a five-lap race, and a time lag race, which I like the most. What time lag is that uh, when one person passes the checkpoint, the second person has so much time to pass the checkpoint before it's, they lose. For example, the time lag is five seconds. The second player has five seconds to pass the check the, che the, the checkpoint. Player one, the first player passed, or they lose. And it could go on, and it keeps going until one person lags behind the designated time. And that's the, probably the most different racing mode. I like time lag. Time lag is unique. I like time lag. It's fun. It could go on for a while. Both players are confident too. So yeah, that's two two player, and it's two player versus. And you got time attack, where you, where you can you're by yourself and you try to set down the fast time you can. You get to pick a car. And you get to pick one of the tracks to play as to, to play on. And you can do a three lap time trial or a free run to try to get the fastest lap, whichever you prefer. Um. But we're not interested in those. I might show them later, maybe. We're going to the arcade mode. Yep, nine, eight and a half minutes in, we're going to the arcade mode, finally. So if you're sitting out in an arcade cabinet, this is what you would see. You get to choose it between championship or practice. In practice mode, you get to pick your car. You get to select one of the three tracks to practice on. You get to do a two-lap race against an AI. They are to practice on one of these tracks, and since this is the Saturn version, you get to play on Lakeside if you have if you've beaten it previously. But we're not interested in that. We're interested in the championship mode. The championship mode is a circuit race on all the tracks. Well, all three of them. I kind of maybe spoil that there's a secret track, possibly. But you do a circuit. You do all three tracks in the row in an effort to try to get first. And you got four, four cars, well, two cars. You get to choose between the Celica and the Delta, I mean, and your automatic. And since this is the Saturn version, you have the unlockable Stratos. I don't know if the Stratos is available to use in the arcade version, but you can use the Stratos here after you beat Lakeside on normal or higher on first. But I use the automatic Delta. One, because I can't use manuals. And two, the Delta is awesome. It's better than the Celica, of course. It's always the Delta, the Deltoid. The Deltoid's better than the Celica, Celluloid. I don't have Deltoids and Celluloids, that's for sure. Or Cellulites, or whatever. But yeah, like I said, this is classic Sega arcade racing. 
you, you start off in the back of the pack and you have to try to work your way up to the front by the end of the race, or races, depending on the game you're playing. But yeah, because of the settings, there are three tracks and, we're, and we have three laps on each track. And there's a secret fourth track, which I may or may not have spoiled. To get to the secret fourth track, you have to, play, you have to be in first place by the end of the third race. Which is why I picked the settings I did. So I, so I can have a party challenge, but still get first place overall. So you can see we're using rally cars, and you can see they're... If you're not familiar with Sega Rally or Rally Car Steering, like Dirt or Colin McRae Rally, you can see that rally cars are a bit more floaty and drifty than, than other cars. Like I said, I was more of a Daytona USA guy. These are a lot more floaty than stock cars, I will say. Yeah, 56, 56. <laughs> I like I like when numbers repeat like that. But yeah. It's just classic racing. The problem is that the AI can get in your way sometimes. Like there. And it kinda of sucks because the AI can slow you down a lot if you get caught behind them. And it kinda of, it, it could ruin a it could ruin a run for you in the end. So just gotta get past this guy. This guy is the one I'm worried about. There we are. Yeah. But yeah, some fun fact. In Sega Rally Online Arcade, which is a PSN and Xbox Live port of Sega Rally 3, um, you can you can unlock, you can play on this track. It's called Desert 95, and it's pretty much a pixel for pixel remake of this. And you can also use the Celica and the Delta if you want to. Yeah, and most cars in that game have five main five speed transmission, but Celica and the Delta only have four four speed. As they do here, because you only need four gears. You know, five is for wusses. Oh, they may they may have up to the five and normal six gears. I don't know. It's been a while since I played that version of Sega Rally. Get out of here, red car. Now the problem is I gotta catch up the ninth here. I'll be in a good position if I can catch up the ninth. That's where I want to be. Here. So I gotta. I can see him. I see ninth in the distance. So I got a focus time here. Come on. I got a witty comment, but I gotta try to. I gotta focus here. Come on. Past ninth. Past ninth. Ugh. Shoo. So yeah, that ninth position is important. Yeah, I needed to get that ninth. Yeah. So yeah, the second track, the forest. Yeah, you can tell these tracks are creatively named. Yeah, I know you guys are probably yelling at me. Yes, I know. I told you, I kind of bomb at Sega Rally a little bit. Like I said, as a Daytona guy in the day. I never played any of these games in the arcades because I was maybe like two or three years old. I had the I had the Championship Circuit Edition of Daytona USA on the Saturn. I played the heck out of that version. Then I got the PSN version of Daytona USA. Hey, speaking of which, if you have the PSN version of Daytona USA, I always want people to play with. And if you guys want to be in a video on RetroCore Podcast, hey, give me a ring. I'm sure I can accommodate you. <laughs> but yeah, this is the forest track. Fun fact. In the Sega Saturn sampler disc that came of each Saturn back in the day, uh, this is the track that you played. You did a practice run on forest. And I played the heck out of this. I had the forest track pretty much memorized. That was back then. Now I don't really have it much memorized. Oh, hairpins. Hate hairpins. Uh, that hairpin on Seaside Street Galaxy still haunts me. Well, I think I took it pretty well. I took I took that hard left wrong more than anything, but yeah. Sampler disc. It's pretty much just a is just a pra practice run of of the forest track here. And I think you could choose the, only the automatic Cel Celica or Delta. I don't think you could choose the manual. And I could be wrong. Oh no, I might tack on the sampler disc contents on this just for funsies, even though it's just a practice run of the forest track. I don't know. Since it's a sampler disc, I don't know if it'll register the 3D pad. Hmm. I don't know. Whoa. The sampler disc, I might, I might do a video on that. Maybe. Yes, it is retro, and there is some gameplay to be had, what limited there is of it, anyway. But yeah. Sega Rally. 
Sega Rally Championship. Yep, I'm running out of commentary right now. Like I said, Daytona USA was my game. I have the Championship Circuit Edition on Saturn. I played the heck out of that. I might do a video on that here in the future. Wink, wink. Along with the PSN version, maybe. You want to know a fun fact? Uh, contrary to popular belief, Panzer Dragoon Saga isn't the most ex isn't the most rare Sega Saturn game. That honor belongs to Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition, the Netlink version. Yeah, they, the Netlink version of Championship Circuit Edition is the rarest uh, uh, Saturn game, commanding prices of eight hundred dollars or more, a thousand, maybe twelve hundred, I think, up and up in there. It's expensive. You know, you know what, you know what though. Don has it. You know, Don of the podcast. If you, if you guys listen to the podcast, Don has a copy of the Netlink edition, and it makes me mad. I don't want to say he doesn't like. I don't want to say he. I don't. I hate him for it, but I hate him for it. He probably doesn't even like Daytona. Maybe. I I would play the heck out of that. I mean, I mean it would ruin the value if I opened it, but still, I want it. It's a Netlink edition. And it's who who's playing Saturn online anymore anyway? I wouldn't even be able to find anybody to play with. But I hate him for it. I hate him for having it. He also has a Metal Sonic statue, but that's another argument entirely. A limited edition Metal Sonic statue. Yeah. Must be nice to have this disposable income, huh? That <laughs> Don. Meanwhile, I'm over here trying to struggle to get a job and pay for college. <laughs> but anyway, personal arguments aside. Man, I wish I had that game. And if I was super lucky, I may have been able to get up to third. But fourth is the butter zone. But fourth is the butter zone here. I needed the. I would have needed to ran a really good race to get third on this track. I would have just been able to pass third place at the tail end of this race. And we got the third and final track, Mountain. We're broke back Mountain men, the four of us. So I got an average passing one car a lap on this track, which I think I can manage. If I was fifth or lower, I probably wouldn't be able to manage it. That was just that would just be too hard for me. This I can manage. As long as I run a decent race, I can pass one car a lap. I should be able to pass all three cars around this point too, around here or a bit further up the road, assuming I run a good race here. Oh, this hairpin sucks. I hate this hairpin. I always lose time on that hairpin. And for once, the guy behind me didn't come up and ram me. I usually have the guy behind me ram me on that hairpin. That hairpin sucks. I hate hairpins in racing games. They're a technical challenge, but I hate them. Ugh. Hairpins, I hate you. Yeah, I'm a guy anyway. I shouldn't have to deal with hairpins. Oh yeah, I have a snarky comment about the... About your navigator here. You know how if, if, if you can hear him over my ramblings, he hear he shouts out directions at you. Sometimes he says maybe, you know, like long easy right maybe. Like he's not sure if it's a long easy right or not. You're supposed to be the navigator, man. He's supposed to know the course for you, and it kind of makes me laugh. It's kind of understandable on on the one lap version. But on the three lap version, when do you think he would realize that it really is a long easy ride or something? Yeah, <laughs> just makes me chuckle. <laughs> I hate this hairpin. Always lose time on the hairpin. No, well, I see second. There, ugly purple second car. I like purple, but it really looks weird on that car. It's purple and pink. You. You don't put purple and pink together, that's a faux pas. Purple and pink do not really go well together. Yeah. So I can, now all I gotta do is catch up the first. I got a lap and a half, or pretty much a lap, just a lap now, to catch up the first. And the fun thing is that the, the first place car is the car you didn't pick. So if you pick the Delta, it would be the Celica. If you pick the Celica, it would be the Delta up in first. Which I always found was neat. It's also the rival car, your rival car in the practice mode, the two lap, two, the two lap practice mode. If you pick the Celica, the Delta's your rival. If you pick the Delta, the Celica's your rival. And I see the Celica up there, barely. 
If I don't, if I don't overtake him here on th these stretches, I should be able, be able to, be able to after the hairpin. Hairpin. Yeah. Okay. I took that badly again, but now I just gotta catch up to the Celica up there. So sorry, I got a concentration time now, so I'm gonna go quiet for a second. It's got a concentration time. As soon as I get past the Celica, I'll be fine. But he's gonna play dirty. Come on, get out of the way. Ugh. Okay, now I just gotta hold him off for these last two turns. Come on, don't be a jerk. I took that all right. All right. Yeah, giggity kiki, all right. So yeah, we finished first place overall. And it'll st and it'll he saw the total time up there. That's our total time, but if you finish like I said, if you finish first on the third track, you get to go to an extra stage. Lakeside. Now this track is super hard. It's super hard. This track's hard. And normally normally you can only play this track if you beat if you finish first, so you, not a lot of people get to practice on this track. And I'm gonna, probably going to make it look a bit easier, because I did practice on this track off-camera a lot. Just like any other racing game, it comes down to track memorization in the end. It sucks, but it just comes down to memorizing the tracks. I know. It comes, it's less about skill and more about memorizing the tracks. But yeah, I played. I made sure to practice rip, it's Lakeside a lot. I keep wanting to call it Riverside. It's Lakeside. River City Ransom, anybody? Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the spiritual sequel. But anyway, uh, yeah. Lakeside's a really hard course. It's full of medium turns that you need to break for, and and a couple hard turns like that. And if and there's a couple of easy turns in there just to throw you. Eh. And because I did three laps, it's three laps. And you may notice that there's no checkpoints on this. This any part sucks. It's a double. It's a double chicane. Here's the first chicane. And the second chicane. The ending of Lakeside just sucks. It's double chicane here. Eh. Normally that'd be all, but nope, we've got two more laps of this. Three laps on Lakeside. This is what some people may call a heck. If you believe in that. If you believe in that place. I don't try don't want to get religious on here. But yeah, this is this is a hard course. It's very tight. You don't really got a lot of room for error. And the Celica, and the Celica or Delta behind you isn't isn't gonna isn't gonna take no prisoners. It's gonna pass you if you mess up a lot of if you mess up uh, once or twice. It has no qualms passing you. And good luck trying to pass it again on these narrow roads. <laughs> you can see, you see, don't really got a lot of room to move around on this on this track. You see, I'm bumping and grinding all the walls while you're yelling at me that I suck at Sega Rally. Like I said, Daytona guy. I'm a Daytona guy. Not used to rally car handling. But I'm doing good so far. I haven't seen the Celica on the screen at all. Usually the Celica would pop in by now and bump me in the back. But I'm doing good. As long as the, if the Celica doesn't appear on the screen, I say that's this, this is a good lakeside race for me. Or yeah, it's lakeside. I got it right that time. I said Riverside. So hopefully I can get a hot lap here. You may notice that the extra, instead of my total time ticking up there, it just keeps flashing extra stage. But it's just what it is. It's just an extra stage. This doesn't count toward your total time. Only the th only the first three stages count toward your total time. So my total time was 10 minutes 14 seconds, which is I can't even defeat. I can't even beat the default fast time. That's how much I suck at Sega Rally. At least I'm better at this than Sega Rally too. I. If you, I super suck at Sega Rally 2. I would do a video on Sega Rally 2 here in the future, but my Dreamcast is a bit on the fritz. I need to either try to DIY it myself or get a new one. The guy that sent it to me didn't play test it thoroughly, and it half works. But yeah. But yep. Yeah. I want to do more Dreamcast games. Problem is, I don't have a lot of Dreamcast games, and it doesn't really work a lot of the time. And whoa. I really spun out there, so hopefully I didn't screw myself. Nope, I'm good. And the Celica still didn't appear on the screen after that mess. I call that a good race. 
So I won. I finished first on Lakeside. I call that a success. No matter how much I sucked. Yeah, that single that sing the single lap is what gets you. There's no checkpoints. And yay! We're the rally champions champions. You get to see our guy and our uh, navigator, Colin McRae Rally. I like to think that the Colin McRae Rally and Dirt is a spiritual successor to Sega Rally. They play fairly similarly, me thinks. Dirt is a bit more realistic, but still. And as and as you're when you beat Lakeside in first place, you can you can finish second or worse in Lakeside. It's possible if you let the Celica pass you. In that case, you fail and you don't get this credit sequence. But yep, you get a special credit song and you can see a replay of your first lap on Lakeside, your first lap or your lap on Lakeside, and you can see the Celica back there. Yeah, that Celica, like I said. It's not, it's not afraid to get up your butts back there, despite the Saturn's bad the Saturn's bad pop-ins. You can see the Celica back there waiting to take first away from you. The rival car. It's just merciless. It's merciless, man. You can see me hitting the walls. There. Trying to do well at least. And the credits are timed out really well. The credits usually end at the end of the at the end of the first slap or at the end of the race, depending on what your settings are. Yep, the pop ins very good <laughs> on this. Yeah. So there we are. There we are. Finish the lap, end of the credits, and I get to enter in my name because I set a hot time. I think as sad as that, as sad as that performance was, I did set a hot time. Nope. Zoom. So what I want, that's how I zoo it, you know? You can see I got ninth. Out of, yeah, I, you can see how bad I am. The best I'd done was fourth out of the default top times. I can't even beat the default top time. That's how much I suck at this game. Yeah, if I would, if I could get, get used to handling the Stratos, maybe. You can see it's all Delta and Celica. Well, let me know if Celica can be selectable in arcade mode. And you can save a replay if you want, but I don't want to eat up data. Here's the best part of the video for you. Game over, yeah! One of the best game overs ever. And it just boots you back out to the arcade mode. But I think we're done here. So yep, I don't think I need to show the two-player mode. If I had a second person, I would show you, but... And time trial is just the three lap time trial without the AI in your way. So if that was Sega Rally Championship for the Sega Saturn. It's a decent port with analog steering being a must. I would, I would if you're fans of racing game or rally, racing games or rally games, it's this is an okay buy for your Sega Saturn again. I recommend Sega Rally 2 on a Dreamcast more because that has way more features than this, and it has a cool song though. Go, go, Sega Rally, I feel the good times, it's alright. Go, oh, Sega Rally, I feel the good times, right on time. Go, go, Sega Rally, I feel the good times, it's alright. Wow, wow, Sega Rally, I feel the good times, right on time. Yeah, that's a theme song too. Uh, Sega Rally 2. The problem is, though, they didn't play it in the American versions. That was only in the Japanese versions. Again, I should have maybe saved that for Sega Rally 2. If I do Sega Rally 2 on a Dreamcast, you can bet I'll sing it. <laughs> if I can get my Dreamcast to work, that is. But yeah, this is Sega Rally on the Saturn. I don't know. I guess I'll I guess I'll show you the menu just for posterity. So I'm gonna go. I'll be player one, the Stratos, and I'll just select the Celica over here. So you can play on either of the four tracks here, and there's the time lag. I guess I'll show you this really quick. I'll just show you this for the lulls, I guess. Do not pay attention to the bottom screen, that screen will be dead. I probably should have just set it to one second, but you can see, so I have time to explain it. It's just like a regular Sega Rally track, Sega Rally race. Here, you got the indicator to see who's in first place. If you thought the pop-in was bad in single, single player, the pop-in's worse when you play two players. <laughs> Look at that. Again, if I had a second player, I wouldn't be looking like an idiot right now, but still. 
when you pass the checkpoint, the time lag starts. And when if, if the person doesn't pass the checkpoint when the lag comes up, they lose. It's a fun mode. And it can go on, like I said, it can go on for a while if both players are competent. It's a fun mode. If I can get my cousin in on this, I can maybe, we can maybe play some Sacred Rally. Pro it'll probably go on my channel, but maybe. Maybe on this channel, maybe. But anyway, yeah. I, for real this time. This has been Sega Rally on the Sega Saturn, an alright port of the arcade game. I would recommend. I would say it's a it's an okay pickup for your Sega Saturn. You can probably find it for less than five bucks today if you have a, if you actually have a Sega Saturn. Again, I would probably recommend Sega Rally Two on the Dreamcast more, and Sega Rally Three on the PSN or Three Six or Xbox Live is alright too. If you have either Sega Rally Online Arcade or but say the Daytona USA on PSN, give me a ring. I'm sure we can work something out on the RetroCore channel. We can revive the RetroCore Weekend Challenge, finally. You know, I'm, I may look like a fool on here, but I do a lot better at Sega Rally Online Arcade. And Daytona USA? <laughs> I'm a champion at that. But anyway, yeah. See you guys next time for another quick look or whatever I decide to do. See, see you later, kiddos. Keep it retro.